Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Vladislav, and I'm representing here um, Ukraine, Huawei. And we would like today to share some experience which we faced, unfortunately, during the last year after Russian offensive on Ukraine, uh, which is related to the support of critical infrastructure, main challenges which occurred for telecommunication field, and some solutions which uh, had to overcome these challenges. Um, sorry, so my presentation will be in English, because I don't know Czech yet, but I hope you can understand. Thank you. Could you play the video, please? So speaking about the main challenges which occurred after the wars were started in Ukraine, uh, first of all, it was a special demands from the government authorities, from the uh, players on the mobile market, to secure the network, to provide the network availability for the subscribers. And uh, also there were new challenges, especially for spare part assurance, because the demand for spare parts increased a lot. And backup communication channels also become the first priority uh, due to the very dangerous situation. And of course, the power outage uh, issue which happened uh, from October was also quite a big challenge. So all of that we will try to uh, describe like how we helped together with our main mobile operators to overcome. And starting, uh, because uh, we start some preparations together with Ukraine mobile operators even a few months before the war, uh, because there were some expectations, no one knows for sure, uh, but uh, let's say the key project which we started to implement from January of 2022 was reallocation of the core network equipment from Kyiv to the west part of Ukraine, which are uh, supposed to be more secure, more safe location. And uh, then already after the war, one of the key projects was a redundancy for the network elements, especially for critical uh, network elements like network management systems, core network, 
uh, which rely for the whole network uh, availability. And uh, starting already uh, from the uh, second half of the year, we focused on the network capacity expansion and also uh, from the October in the Q4, main challenge was the power, uh, let's say, grid outages, power outages, uh, because mobile network and uh, generally the internet also depends on the power supply as well as everything else. And uh, first what we did that we organized a strong support team which included uh, local experts, our remote support experts and also R&D and to organize a 24 on 7 monitoring of the whole network, availability of network elements, the statistics, the user experience and also meanwhile implement the key projects for the network expansions, for the redundancy of the uh, network elements and the demand of the, uh, let's say, for the uh, network issues also increased a lot due to the circumstances. So we handled just during the last year around uh, 440 uh, requests from our customers, implemented more than 2,000 operations on the live network and performed the software updates for the uh, more than 50k time. And uh, the main part also was the spare parts. Uh, and normally the demand increased four times compared to the previous years. Uh, so just to one year, we delivered uh, more than 800 spare parts to our main customers in Ukraine. And uh, speaking about also some key projects uh, and special demands, uh, I can give some examples. So there was a demand from Ukrainian government, so from the military authority to disable uh, LED LED uh, lights on the equipment, on RRU, from the safety reason, in order not to be a target for the uh, attacks. So um, it was not typical uh, operation, so special software was developed by our R&D just during the 10 days and implemented for the whole network. Well, which is a pretty fast uh, compared to the normal delivery terms. And um, we gathered around 300 uh, support team, uh, 300 people, including 100 local experts in Ukraine and uh, our support from the regional centers and from R&D, uh, which helped actually to implement all these projects because this strong support team actually is the basis uh, for the network uh, support and uh, without it uh, you cannot succeed in such difficult situation. And just during the several months we performed expansions of the LTE network on more than 4,500 sites. Uh, it means launching of the new bands, uh, launching of the new, uh, I mean, new frequencies on the existing equipment. Uh, why it was important? Because uh, first we suspect the huge traffic boom immediately after 24th of February. Uh, the traffic, data traffic in mobile networks increased um, like 60%. And the people demand for the data traffic was really high. And the second thing that uh, a lot of people reallocated uh, to some more safe regions in the west part of Ukraine or in some uh, village region uh, and the traffic profile for the whole network really changed. So uh, network capacity was not ready and it was not planned and designed for that. So it was a crucial to perform very fast expansions and also for the voice services into G and 3G which was done on more than 6,000 sites for all three main operators. And uh, with our joint efforts, we managed to keep the network availability on the level of 92%, uh, which, considering the circumstances, is quite a good number. And uh, some key solutions which we also implemented, it, maybe this experience ca can be interested. Uh, so first one, it was the launch of the uh, BTSs using Starlink transmission. It was really important, especially on the deoccupied zones, like for example Irpin or Bucha, or later on in Kherson, uh, because these regions were fully cut from the telecom, telecom from every supply, 
there was no anything there, and it was a crucial to launch some, uh, to create some mobile coverage there very fast. But you don't have transmission, you don't have electricity there. Uh, so with the help of the Starlink transmission, we launched it through the IPsec secure tunnel. Uh, operators quickly deploy the base stations uh, using the diesel generator for the power and uh, for the transmission uh, using the Starlink uh, equipment. And it brought the coverage, it brought the service for the uh, people in these regions uh, almost immediately. And uh, the second thing, which was also done by joint efforts from the, all the operators, including all the vendors who participated in that, it was a national roaming launch. So basically, it was the first time deployed in Ukraine uh, for 2G and 3G to uh, secure the voice service. It was also very important because in, especially in regions near the um, military conflict, uh, there were huge unavailability of the network elements and coverage of all operators has suffered and using the national roaming uh, subscribers, if their operator is down in that location, they can try to search for the network of other operator and hopefully if it's available, they can use. And we observed uh, that thousands of people, uh, even hundreds of thousands of people, they use the national roaming and it really helped in very difficult moment for just normal people in Ukraine. And uh, some more solutions, uh, there were also one project for self-broadcast uh, emergency, self-broadcast system implemented uh, and it was guided by the government uh, to make uh, uh, in-time information for the uh, all subscribers like national wide about the, some danger like red attacks, uh, red, uh, air attacks, or red alerts, um, using the, this service, this platform. And to, actually it was launched, uh, I guess, already in summer, so it took some time to, because you need to deploy it end-to-end, -end, the platform, then connect it to the oper each operator system, deploy on the core network, and deploy on the run equipment. And then your each subscriber phones, which is capable, and a majority of the Android phones supporting this feature. And even the Apple, the, by default they don't support, but for Ukraine they developed special patch and pushed it very fast. And this service was supported by, also by the Apple devices. And um, from the security perspective, we also designed special algorithm and help our customers to implement them in time. Uh, to secure the network uh, and the network element access. Uh, so to block the local access to the base station so it can be very hard to reuse this equipment, especially if the region will be occupied, and uh, restrict the remote access to the equipment, and uh, as well is a license control, uh, because each network element is operated by license, so in order to secure it, it's better to use some short-term license, temporary one, and just substitute it on re a regular basis. So even if the equipment uh, can be accessed, it cannot be used for a long period of time. Um, one of the key projects also, it was a backup of the core network elements, which includes the network management systems, CS core and packet core. And, uh, here we are speaking about geographical redundancy because for these network elements if they will be down after for example missile attack the whole network or control or user plane will become unavailable and it will create huge damage for whole infrastructure so uh, to avoid that uh, the it was really important to deploy geographical redundancy to allocate these uh, elements with a backup in different parts of Ukraine. Uh, so it was, this project was quickly deployed uh, just during the Q2 of last year and we created geographical redundancy for almost all core network elements and key elements. And uh, also there was a logistic channel uh, issue because uh, all the routes, uh, how equipment was delivered to Ukraine were blocked, uh, the uh, access from the sea, at, uh, air, delivery was not impossible due to the war. So uh, 
uh, our colleagues uh, quickly deployed the new logistic channel uh, through the mostly through the sea to European Union and then by trucks equipment was delivered to Ukraine even in spite of the raised cost uh, we managed to deliver all necessary spare parts and necessary equipment uh, within the defined deadlines um, also we had several projects together with uh, uh, government and financial sector of Ukraine uh, mostly related uh, to the data centers, data centers backup, supply of the backup channels, supply of the batteries and video security systems. Uh, some of them uh, I will also tell a little bit more details. For the modular data center it was request from one of the government enterprise uh, to deploy quickly a uh, data center where the important data could be backed and in terms of security uh, it should be located in uh, some hard accessible place and uh, due to the construction uh, capabilities of the modular data center it can be really quickly deployed and uh, the data uh, can be transferred and have some mirroring possibility to, with the help of the Dorado servers to pick up this data to the third party data centers in case if there will be a dangerous situation for that particular location. And also uh, we had a, a trial with our uh, Ministry of Interior, one pilot, to deploy the video system for controlling together with the police for the control of the uh, emergency services and but unfortunately the trial was uh, stopped due to the war but we are hoping it can be continued uh, just after the war will be finished and with the financial sector we deployed uh, one project with one of the biggest Ukrainian banks it's uh, uh, access through the like backup channels through the mobile network access with our rotors which are capable with a 4G and 5G radio model and in case of the main channel will become unavailable uh, immediately connection can be restored using the mobile communication channel so it was very important to secure the bank operations transactions which are kind of a basic need for all the people and this project helped to implement this very fast and one of the also main challenges which we faced on the later stages it was the power grid outages after uh, Russians will started to bomb the power plants in Ukraine uh, there were huge problems with the power supply and sometimes there were no power in main city like home country almost uh, for several days uh, but usually the period of outage can reach up to 8 to 12 hours so network, mobile network and the telecommunication network was also very impacted by this issue and we uh, also we observed that around 50% of the base stations of mobile network became unavailable because their uh, accumulatory battery cannot last too long and if there is no power supply mobile network will be also dead um, so uh, together with our operators we implemented some workarounds which can help a little bit to minimize the damage. So first it was a special features with the Huawei radio access equipment which helped to disable part of the equipment uh, which is like second priority on the base station and save, this is actually trial, uh, the whole network result we saved around 26% of power consumption prolongs the duration of uh, working duration from the uh, accumulator battery of the 26% <coughs> and one of the uh, other solutions was of course if there is no power supply main grid power supply you need to at least to keep the co core side the most important side operational to create the basic coverage so together with our operators we help them to plan to select those sites uh, based on the capabilities because you are limited you don't have too much diesel generator you don't have too much batteries uh, to create some long-term capacity without power grid 
And uh, due to the special planning uh, tool, uh, we can select precisely for which sites it's more beneficial to deploy such uh, energy solution to create the best possible coverage in those conditions. And other things was deployment. Of, now we are trialing now the system uh, which help in the closed loop mode to implement special settings in the network. It's also disabling or enabling of the logical network elements based on the load and based on the power supply conditions. The target is to minimize power, to minimize power, uh, let's say power supply, and also to keep the user experience on at least more or less sufficient level. So this tool now we are already launched with one of our uh, clients in Ukraine and based on first trial result it can help to save up to 40% power consumption and reduce the network congestion uh, for different services from uh, two to three times. And uh, considering the batteries, we also face the issue that most of Ukraine mobile operators they had very old uh, lead acid batteries apart and uh, it can supply the energy only during one hour or maximum one hour and a half if there is no uh, power grid supply. Of course it's possible to deploy lithium batteries which are currently, if they are new one they can help a lot but it's very costly and you cannot deploy for all sites in, uh, in like such big country like in Ukraine. It's taking time, it's a big cost. So uh, we designed special hybrid solution when we can combine all batteries, lead acid batteries, with the lithium batteries. And uh, first, like it will be discharged lead acid batteries, like 50%, which helps to prolong the lifetime of this battery. Uh, because due to the technology effect, if you have frequent charging times, the uh, just life duration of this battery can reduce uh, to several months. After several months, this battery will be fully dead. And if you combine it with a lithium battery, you can prolong this time to uh, like five, even ten times, depends on how frequent there will be power outage. So this solution is also currently widely used by uh, some of the operators. And. Uh, Taking, uh, talking about the customer support, because really a lot of uh, projects, a lot of actions were implemented and currently ongoing with uh, our clients in Ukraine. And uh, uh, the main thing is to have a very strong support team. And currently Huawei has more than 30 years experience in customer support, operates the millions of network elements and thousands of networks, which also helped, uh, uh, helped our customers in Ukraine to keep the network uh, as much as possible in those conditions, safe and secure. And uh, besides of that, also we implemented some uh, humanitarian projects, so delivered the humanitarian aid to Ukraine people. Together with Ministry of Digital Transformation in Ukraine, we developed one app for the children mental health, which helped the uh, the families to take care about the, because you know in these conditions it was really important and we deployed uh, several Wi-Fi networks in university bomb shelters uh, in like Kiev Polytechnic University and some others uh, because currently it's a normal situation when students or uh, teachers are staying half day in the bomb shelter due to the very frequent air attacks. Just to make some short summary um, about the learned lessons, so what we uh, can like summarize from our experience in Ukraine, that's it's quite important to uh, create a backup channels and um, create the uh, backup uh, of the key network elements and uh, try to focus on the network security on the uh, backup logistic channels um, and to secure the data centers and uh, prepare in advance key sites power supply uh, because what we face like you cannot do it very fast you are limited in time and implementation time delivery time production time because at least some key sites should have backup power supply it can be 
different kinds of sun batteries, solar, diesel generator, but it should be prepared in advance. Yeah. So thank you for your attention. Yeah. If you have any questions uh, later on, you can ask, uh, so we can discuss, uh, and maybe can be some translation done as well. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation, and uh, just to let you know that uh, you, you've been nominated for one of the prizes that we're going to be giving out today uh, for your work that you've been doing in Ukraine. And thank you for, for all the work that you, you've done there, and uh, uh, hope that everything's going to be going to go well. Oh, thank you very much. It's an honor for me, but I, I guess it's a surprise not for me, but the, for the whole team. I think there are so many people who work and continue working in Ukraine to support the people there because we know that communication is uh, one of the basic need now, the key importance for the, uh, people to stay connected with their relative families, and without that, it's hard to survive. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. We thank you as well. Thank you for uh, attention of a conference. Uh, this is a t-shirt for you, like a small, small souvenir. That's that's mean Wi-Fi and uh, have a nice trip home. <laughs> yeah, great. One question: Have you measured uh, during the outbreak of war, uh, like a company, like a Huawei company, with situation in Russia? because uh, European and other worldwide vendors of, uh, of uh, mobile operators, let's uh, say uh, telco, uh, telco industry, uh, was uh, uh, put it under sanctions, and how, how you behave with uh, a Russian networks, uh, like a company? Well, I can tell, like, from perspective of Huawei Ukraine, we just focus on our customers because that's what we should do, what we are doing, and try to support in any conditions. And we understood that there is a quite unspecific situation and uh, we need to put a lot of resource to support Huawei Ukraine. Uh, I mean, from Huawei Ukraine side, our uh, three mobile operators and also government requests. So we focused on that. And in terms of uh, a global operation, actually, I cannot give too much comments uh, because uh, as a representative of Huawei Ukraine, I have full information only for that part. And uh, that's currently we continue very strong cooperation because in Ukraine we have uh, more than 60% of market share for wireless equipment for Huawei. And we have the core network equipment, we have a lot of uh, transmission equipment and it's like operators really rely on Huawei on the moment uh, because their support in these conditions is very crucial yes and we are trying to do our best just what we can do okay thank you let's uh, keeping the fingers crossed and uh, take a van Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I also just want to thank all the uh, Czech nation, Czech people for huge support for the Ukraine. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Dobrze.